So lately, there's been this theory going around amongst uh, Bitcoin maximalists and many financial analysts who bet on the cryptocurrency markets. And to be fair, I, I should say right out of the gate that I am pretty close to what you would call a Bitcoin maximalist, although I'd call myself a maximalish because I'm not completely all the way over on that side. But I do mostly bet on just Bitcoin at this point. And the way people like me and people in this space have been thinking lately is that the next crypto bull run isn't going to happen until we purge the rest of the stupid. And what that means is Bitcoin needs to get back to the dominance it had in the market in the good old days. Good old days being typically what, like 2013 and before where, where Bitcoin was really the only one that mattered. Um, and many would argue it still is the only one that matters. Uh, but at least in terms of market cap, which we can certainly debate how much of that is real. Um, it, it looks like it doesn't control nearly as much of the market as it used to. And so there's this idea that until we see Bitcoin get back to like 70, 80, 90% dominance, that we can't get another bull run. And if we do get another bull run before it gets there, that the next crash will be even worse than this one because it means we had another bubble in a world where you have these ridiculous things like, uh, I can't believe I don't remember, like BitConnect, or you literally have coins called Tron, like named after a movie funded by some guy who's been posing next to Chinese billionaires that don't know who he is and then passing them off as family members like you have all of these ridiculous ridiculous coins um that have all of this mar market share and until those coins are purged how can we get another bull run you know the next bull run needs to be smarter but and i've been thinking this too you know until we purge a lot of the dumbness i don't think another bull run's coming but I recently was thinking, you know, I think there's a big misconception in Bitcoin dominance and it might be bigger than people think. It's just not the same as it was before. Let me show you. Okay, so let's take a look at Bitcoin dominance over time here. And this is just the past five years, but I think that's good enough. So when people talk about the good old days of Bitcoin dominance or when maximalists do, so they think it's a good thing if Bitcoin's completely in control. You go back to 2013, you know, you have 95% here. Bitcoin is, it's not even worth mentioning other coins. People mention Litecoin a lot, but only because it made massive gains, bro. It's not really because it was even, you know, it, it was basically the best you could say is it was a fraction of Bitcoin, a small fraction. And then Ripple over here in 15, or is this, yeah, 14, you know, Bitcoin's dominance goes down and Ripple got all the way to 13%, which was crazy back then. Um, but people would still typically call this the good old days of Bitcoin dominance. You know, it still shot back up. Bitcoin was 80% dominance. So people say Bitcoin needs to get back to 80 or 90% dominance. And in those days, you had, a, a, you know, the next biggest coin, next biggest coin, Right, I wouldn't call Ripple a cryptocurrency, but it was about a tenth of Bitcoin's market cap, and that was considered a big deal. And then we get down here to where Ethereum really did almost match Bitcoin in market cap. And again, it's certainly up for debate how much of market caps are real. So I, I, I do always say that too, but you know, and, and there's a real argument here for, you know, what's going on? Bitcoin's decentralized. It has, you know, how come people are allowing these other coins to take up so much of the market? And then Bitcoin just rallied at the end of 17, all the way up back to, you know, almost 60% dominance here. And, and then it plummeted again in 18, and then up again. And it's kind of been a steady uptrend over the second half of 18. And now in 19, it's just been flat. It's been flat for a few months now, around the 50% mark which I'm happy it's there instead of 30. But for a while I was thinking, God, shouldn't it be at 70%? Like, it, you know, because I had always accepted, right? I had always accepted that Bitcoin's dominance will never get back to 90% because there's used to be 100 cryptocurrencies. Now there's thousands and they keep making more. And if you count all of them, which I don't think you should, frankly, I think we should only be measuring the top 100 if that, maybe top 50, because all of these other ones, it's impossible to tell how much that money's even real. But whatever, right? 
Like, if you're going to count everything that claims its money and on a list, like, yeah, forever Bitcoin's dominance will never be where it used to be because it can't be when you have 5,000 coins instead of 100. But what if we run with this idea and actually look what the percentages are now? Because this surprised me when I checked this today. So let's look here, right? Ethereum used to be a large part of the market, you know, uh, typically 20, 25%. But look what's been happening late 2018 and 2019 here. It's going down. And what's taking its place? Nothing. And, and look at gray. Gray on this chart here is others. You know, the other 3,000 shit coins. So if we go back a year, others was what, 14%? Look at it. It's climbing. Other now is the biggest non-Bitcoin measurement, and it's continuing to ascend. It's my opinion that we're going to get to a point where other takes up at least 25% to a third of the market. And I, I would say you should just not pay attention to it. Other doesn't. It, this is like these coins in 500th place are being counted that no one actually uses. And who is in second place now? Ethereum? But look, it's at 10%. It's, and that's the next biggest coin right now is Ethereum at 10% of the market. And if we go all the way back to 14, it's actually worth less of the market than Ripple was in 14. So, one, so I am making the argument that Bitcoin's dominance has actually never been better because the only thing that's changed is people are counting more shit coins. It's not that Bitcoin's dominance is lower. And that's my point. I think over time we might get to this situation where these altcoins have more and more forks of each other, have more and more infighting and split off and splinter and splinter and splinter. And maybe Bitcoin will only have half of the market or 30% of the market or a quarter of the market, but it depends how you count it. And what happens when it starts to become right? Like, look at these coins here. Like, what's the next biggest one after that? If, you know, Ripple at 9% and then what? Litecoin and three Bitcoin cash, 2%. Like, these, are, this is ridiculous, right? Like, how can you call that a big deal anymore? Like what happens when the second, if we get to a situation where the second biggest coin by market cap is at only 8%, like 5%. That, can you even call that second place? You know, it's hard to call some, it's really more like tied for last place. Like everyone's just tied for last place and Bitcoin's just in first place by like a massive margin, right? And so that's really my point here that I think actually people might be looking at this the wrong way. Bitcoin's dominance relative to a second place coin is at its highest margin in the past, I think, uh, almost four years. Bitcoin's dominance relative to the next biggest coins is the big, highest it's been like four years. Maybe it is better than we think or better than Bitcoin maximalists think. Maybe Bitcoin's dominance has never been stronger. In conclusion, I'll say two things. Number one, I really just think in general, we need to stop paying attention to what I'll call these legacy statistics in the crypto space that really don't mean what they used to mean. And you could argue we're always manipulated anyways. This idea that in a world of 5,000 shit coins that we should be counting them for anything is a ridiculous notion to me just in general. We might want to just start ignoring um, coinmarketcap.com. And number two, even if we don't ignore it, the way we look at it should probably change. A lot's changed in this space in the past five years. Why should the numbers we look at also not change? Because I can and just did make the argument that in fact, Bitcoin's dominance is the strongest it's been in four years. Uh, if you compare it to the second best coin, it's not even close. You have to go all the way back to 2014 to find a time when Ripple was at 13%, right? Like this is, this is very good for people that think that the bull market can't go on again in the crypto space until Bitcoin's dominance has returned because perhaps it has. And what happens when Bit when when you have the second and third place coins down to like 5% and Bitcoin's still at 45 or 
then it's a nine to ten times stronger still and that is this that is just as important a factor you know it's relativeness to the next 10 coins as just the overall bs market itself because most of those coins are scams and bullshit um and one last note i'll say is for longtime fans of my channel uh, although it can't be that long because this channel is not that old don't worry this hasn't just turned into a bitcoin channel i just had a thought about bitcoin dominance that i haven't seen a single person look at in the way i just did so i thought it would be interesting to throw out my opinion on something i think i know a bit about um if you don't want to watch anything about bitcoin you hate seeing the words bitcoin or the word bitcoin just ignore my videos that show it in the future. Don't worry. My next video is going to be about the normal stuff that uh, you're used to me talking about. Um, all right. Uh, please like, subscribe, share this video. I have a Patreon. Support me on there. And also, if you're a Bitcoin person and you came in here, there's a good chance you're into PC hardware. Please check out my channel and consider uh, supporting me for that content as well. All right. Thank you.